Hello folks and welcome back to Star Wars Rebellion, which happened to be like the second game that I ever played on this channel here. Uh, what Rebellion is, is it is a game that came out, I want to say in 97. Um, it's a strategy game, one of the first Star Wars strategy games to come out, which pits the Rebellion against the Empire. Uh, you can choose to play either side and... I consider it a grand strategy game, even though some people don't. Some people consider it more 4X. Uh, which, you know, definitely have blendings of each other. Uh, outside of the US, or at least in the UK, I think this was also called Star Wars Supremacy. Which is interesting how they had a different naming convention outside of the US. Um, maybe the... The Brits are a little scared of the word rebellion. <laughs> so what we're going to do today, we're going to play the Empire. We're going to do it and the uh, large galaxy size. We'll go with the intermediate difficulty. Now, hopefully nothing here will get copyright flagged. I've turned off the music here, so that shouldn't be an issue, um, which was one of my main issues before. And why I've kind of avoided a lot of Star Wars games, too. Um, I do have some Star Wars The Old Republic music playing in the background, but I think that will be okay. We'll see, though. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, with the music off, I don't think there will be any uh, sound during the cutscenes, which is good, because the cutscenes especially were the ones that got copyright flagged when I first played this game. Oh, nope, there will be. Okay. We'll have to skip that. Now, the nice thing, I am playing this in a VMware. Uh, virtual machine, so I can just hit escape and shuts up the little introduction there. We're gonna go to very slow here for the moment while we plan out, see where things look. Checking through here, okay. One reason I want to check through here, I have a uh, a mod that I've made for Rebellion, and I think I've shown it on the channel before. But I wanted to make sure I'm not playing a modified run. Okay, so this is like totally cheating here. <laughs> With this setup, uh, we have two Imperial Star Destroyers here to start out. So that's really nice. We'll go ahead and rename these. I don't really name all of my ships, but any of them that, you know, are decent. There's nothing wrong with modding, or not modding, naming them. We're going to move our little transport fleet over here. Uh, which happens to have two admirals with it. We have Piet and Vader here. Let's expand this out a little bit. Now, for those who haven't played Rebellion before, which is probably quite a few of you, given that, you know, it's such an old title and really never took off back in the day, um, you operate with fleets, you operate with troops. There is a little... Um, not mini game it's a tactical mode pretty much where you can control your ships versus the AI ships and all that or if you're playing multiplayer against your friends it's not very in-depth but there are little things you can do um, to command the ships command who they fight up against and that sort of thing now one of the first things you want to do and kind of the highlights of this game is working with the characters. So you want to go to your faction leader, either Palpatine as the Empire or Mon Mothma. And you can actually do this with any of the primary characters. Um, so Palpatine and Vader, and then for the Rebels, it's Han, Luke, Leia, and Mon Mothma can all do recruitment. Usually I just stick to using the Emperor because the Vader has a lot better uses. Um, Piet also has some better uses. His diplomacy is 89, which is relatively decent. Oh, am I going to be getting these alerts here this whole time? Well, hopefully it won't be too bad. But, yeah, that diplomacy is definitely going to be useful. Uh, so let's go ahead and send him out. Now, first things first, before I send him out, I want to find a system that has some decent uh, production buildings on it. Corsant starts automatically always going to have at least one construction art construction yard on it. Uh, so I generally set Coruscant to be like the main construction area. So we'll go ahead and build a second construction yard, and we're going to use this uh, troop training 
facilities that we have here to build some of these. Um, we're, we're not necessarily going to, you know, keep these troop training facilities here on Coruscant, but we'll have them for the time, be time being. Yuvina doesn't have anything, Bortress doesn't have anything. Gorman has one troop training facility, Balmora nothing, Chandrilla has one. It looks like Gorman has more open energy. Their energy between the two... Now the energy, for those who don't know, is used to determine what kind of buildings you can build. So Chandrilla has a little bit more, but Gorman's is open, so we'll go ahead and go there. Vader, let's move you to the you Judicator. Wish. Actually, you know what? No, we'll leave you there. Um, when Nita and Screed show up, we'll move them to the Judicator. But we're what we're gonna do, we're gonna send Vader out on some missions. Uh, before we do that, let's go ahead and look at his stats. So Vader starts with 110 espionage rating, 220 combat rating. Leadership we'll get into later. Diplomacy we were talking about with Piet. Diplomacy obviously is pretty good with Vader, probably just because he scares people into uh, joining them. But uh, I actually, for this playthrough, I want to try and use him more in a combat role. So we'll send Vader out to Corson. Now Vader's good enough with his skills that he can kind of go out on his own. That even if he gets intercepted, he should be able to escape. So we're going to send him out here, try and figure out what they have, and decide you know, what we can do about taking over. Um, so let's see, we got Judicator and Aggressor here. We have a Galleon. Galleons are completely unarmed ships. They only have troops. So that's the only good that this will be. We have a decent amount of Stormtrooper regiments in here. Five there, and then we have two fleet regiments there. So we'll be able to go out from the start and do some decent uh, takeovers. Now one thing I'll note, Corson here, if you look, has a uh, has an ion cannon, and it also has two shield generators. It's going to make taking this place difficult, so I may not necessarily want to take that first. Veers is at Salonia, and we have no production facilities here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually transfer Veers over to Corson um, to do some troop training. It'll take him a little while to get over here. But he'll arrive in time to do some troop training before we transfer him over. Ooh. Okay, one bad thing about the start, my popular support is horrible. Usually when you start a large empire, you have like maybe two, three systems that don't have a lot of support. There are six of them that don't. So I'm kind of suffering for having those two Star Destroyers. Because we have one in the Krillin Sector, two in the Fakir Sector, one in the Sluis Sector, and two in the Dolomar Sector. What that tells you is, since popular support is so low, um, those systems can potentially go into Rebellion. A victory Destroyer here. No production, no production. Ooh. So pretty much what you need, you need troop regiments to keep order. You'll see the garrison requirement here is four. If that goes under, what's going to happen is going to go into rebellion or into an uprising, as they call it in this game. So the uprising prevents, it hurts resources, and it also prevents you from being able to produce anything on the world. So that would be very bad. Now the rebellion is probably going to be targeting some of these worlds to try and get them to fall into rebellion. So that is definitely not good. We have Mendo here. He is more of an agent. He doesn't have any skills for leading or ship design or anything like that. So I think we will make use of him. One little trick that I like to do... Well, we'll put him on the planet for one. Um, I like to send out some of my guys to the neutral worlds first to build up their stats. So, Mendo, we will send him here. We're not sending him for diplomacy, because he sucks at that. But we'll send him for espionage. More than likely, it's not going to reveal anything. Instead, what's going to happen is uh, he'll succeed at this mission, and his espionage rating will go from 84 to 85. If you do that several times, you'll eventually get them up. 
An espionage rating of like 90 to 100 is pretty good. What you want for most characters who are going out on missions like that. Okay, here we go. Gergerod, the, uh, I think he was a, no, not a moth. Or was he a moth? Let's see what the encyclopedia, oh, he was a moth, okay. Um, yeah, he was in charge of the construction of the second Death Star. So, what we're going to use him, we're, well, before I send him to potentially take one of these worlds, uh, with diplomacy, let's check and see if we have any production facilities. We have a lot of shipyards here, but they're small individual shipyards. So really nothing worth keeping, which is going to be... Uh, or at least not keeping in large amounts. Now Camparis here has seven free energy slots, which is the most, I think? Yes. Uh, by a hair. Of the worlds that haven't been taken, there are no construction facilities. Ugh. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting run. So what we're going to do, instead of trying to take one of these lesser worlds for the moment, I'm going to send Jojerod to do diplomacy on Camparus. Get it more under our control. Another thing I'm going to do, I'm going to start to build up some TIE fighters here. And I think I might actually do that using these other shipyards as well. Camparis will be kind of like a bastion to defend against the rebels. Amwa would probably be a good place to set up some defenses um, for eventually doing construction yards, but yeah, I'm gonna have to get some construction yards for that. Umbel has that. Mrs. didn't have anything, correct? Okay. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting run. So far, I only have two construction yards in the whole galaxy. Alright, so our little galleon has arrived. Let's... Oh, and the Emperor is already done. Did he succeed? He did succeed! Okay. So we're moving those two over here. Nita, I think, is the better one. No, Screed is. Okay. Screed will be the Admiral. Nita is going to be the Commander. What a Commander does, it kind of improves the stats on the Starfighters that are in the fleet. Since we have all TIE Fighters, it's really not going to help too much. Uh, what the Admiral does is helps the stats of the Starships, though. That's going to be more useful, especially with two Imperial Star Destroyers here. Uh... Pelion, I kind of want to send you out, but for the moment we'll leave you here. Now we have to find a good target to take. Well, Avram has a shipyard. If we can take that before they can do much with it, we'll have a location to kind of help us in the uh, Sesuena sector. So let's go ahead, move out, and we'll see what we can do. Does Avram... It only has one planetary shield, that's a good start. And also another thing you'll see is kind of one of my go-to methods for taking over the galaxy, which I'll say seems to work pretty well. It's not the most perfect, but it works pretty well. It's a little dangerous. Um, if it goes wrong, it can potentially cause an entire system to fall. All right, so we're starting out here against one Y-Wing and one medium transport. More than likely, they're going to try and flee, but we'll see what we can do. The fleet is ready, Admiral. We await your orders. So this is the little tactical screen. You can zoom in on the medium transport here. Uh, you have groups of ships, which are generally put together in a way that, uh, like the ships that are more anti-capital or around the same strength are in one group. And then the ones that either are against starfighters or in another. And fi then finally, another group would be the ships that are either unarmed or more transport oriented. So you can see the galleon is group two here. They're not going to go into battle. Group one is going to try and take out the medium transport. Again, it's probably going to run. Group one will go after the fighters. Group two will go after the transport. 
Now, generally early on in the game, um, most of these... Wait, are they actually attacking? Oh, that is a horrible choice on their part. I totally expected them to flee. Yeah, that is a really bad choice on their part. I was going to say that usually at this point in the game, the AI flees from any sort of battle. Because, you know, up against two Star Destroyers, well, even if it was just one Star Destroyer, it would just be a bad time. But two Star Destroyers, this transport's going to die. And the Y-Wings aren't going to do any better. Uh, the Y-Wings have been destroyed. So yeah, we'll just wipe out this transport here. Yeah, that was a very, very poor choice on the part of the AI. Usually they don't make such a grave error early on, but apparently they have in this, in this instance. Alright, so what has happened here? Gorman joins. So that little battle... Um, either between the battle or the fact that Piet was doing diplomacy, maybe a little of both, caused Gorman to join us. Um, uh, we look at the ground, there's a couple of Alliance Army regiments. Hopefully Screed is decent enough that he's not going to completely butcher this and destroy the shipyard. Oh, that would be bad. Planetary bombardment. And nothing. So one thing about doing bombardments, uh, they become more effective once you unlock TIE Bombers. I'm not entirely sure how the whole thing works, but I know the capital ships have what's called a bombardment modifier. Star Destroyers have a bombardment modifier of two. Um, Star Fighters have a bombardment value. Uh, now the only ones that have Anything for the Empire are the TIE Bombers, and I want to say the TIE Defenders have a value as well. So let's try another Bombardment. And another Bombardment. Oh god. So apparently we're so weak that we can't get through them. This might be where agents come in handy. Uh, so Pelion, I'm going to send you over to the Judicator. Don't worry folks, I'm not going to send Pelion down <laughs> to do the work. That would be a bad idea. Screed has some decent stats. He could potentially do something. Nita has... Oh, I didn't know that Nita was actually that decent. So Nita could do something as well. Only thing I have to be careful not to get them abducted. If we look at the... Alliance Army Regiments. They have a detection value of 10. Only two of them, though, which would be 20. So theoretically, I could send... Nita and Screed down to take them out. Let's go ahead and do it. Nita will be the main one. Screed is going to be the decoy. Since things don't seem to be working as I would like them for the moment. But I want to take out these regiments because I don't want to risk my troops. Uh, just yet. Even though they can win the battle, obviously. But, for what I want to do, it would kind of go against the plan. Success! Fail! Foiled! What? Okay, let's try this again. Come on, guys. You can do this. I believe in you. Unless I gotta send Dorja over there. I don't really want to, because you generally do want to have an agent on Coruscant uh, acting as a general. One of our agents is reporting in. But if I have to, I will send him over to join them. Uh, Darth Vader has finished his mission at Corson. They have a Corvette heading over, and they do have... Ooh. So Corson's gonna have to be taken as well, because they have that shipyard. Alright, success. Let's move on the other one. 
Need a screed. Target the army regiment. A manufacturing message has been received. I will say though, here with Dorja, uh, given that he has some decent espionage and combat rating stats, I might actually want him to be leading a fleet. Um, so I can do similar actions if I need to. Alright, so Mendo has returned over to Camperus. And as we can see, his espionage rating has gone up to 85. Send him out again. Keep improving his stats there. And if he's lucky, maybe he'll find out that they are up to something. Now, another thing with Vader's mission. We learned about Corson, but we also got some information on Sivrin, which is down here. Anything notable? Uh, they have a construction yard here, which would be a nice target to take. So as soon as we take this Alliance Army Regiment, I think we might move um, over to Sivrin. Probably helps if I speed it up a little bit. Success! Alright. Uh, I'm gonna move the fleet over to Sivrin and then head back to Avram to finish the job. So actually, Helian, you are going to be Admiral. Because you're better, right? Oh no, you're not. Helian, I'm very disappointed in you. I expected more. But there is a reason that we have Pelion in this little fleet here. Alright, go to Sivrin to disrupt their construction yard activities. A manufacturing message has been received. Because the thing is, you'll notice that this construction yard is sending One its thing is in. over to Halawan. Um When our fleet arrives, what's going to happen is it's going to stop, completely stop that production. Now, if it was only producing the construction yard at Sivrin, it wouldn't stop the production. Um, but because it's targeted to another world, it's going to stop it, which will be a nice little, nice little something. There is a message from the Emperor. The Emperor has recruited Shania Rix. She's got some decent One stats on her. As in. you wish. Um, let's try to take out some of these. Hopefully, I'm not sending her into a trap there. But I think her espionage rating of 99 will work. A manufacturing message has been received. Poor Vader. He's just flying around space. He'll he'll uh never reach this place. <laughs> All right, it appears that they are not here. A message has been received Do we go straight to take Sivrin? I think I should. Because the popular support there is much closer to being in my favor. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to continue doing what I've been doing. Send Nita and Screed down. Let's take that out. Hellion's gonna be the new admiral. A manufacturing message has been received. Uh, 
Excellent. Alright. Sivrin is defenseless. All they have is a planetary shield. So we're going to move and planetary assault. Now, this is the thing that's going to probably really surprise you. I'm going to take all of my troops, except for one, and leave the system. The planet's going to go into uprising. There appears to be some negative news about Vader will be here in five days. And when he does arrive, I'm going to send all of my forces, or all of my uh, admirals, characters, you know, whatever, down to Severin to uh, subdue the uprising. In the process of doing that, they're going to raise the popular support on the system. One of our agents is reporting in. So even though um, I only have two people that would be good with diplomacy, uh, I actually have four because all of these characters have a decent a manufacturing message has been received. level of uh, leadership, which goes into the whole uh, Subdue Uprising mission. A manufacturing message has been received. Come on, Vader, you're almost here. It is 35, right? Yes. Alright, Vader has arrived. We're gonna grab everyone. Send them on a mission to Sivrin to subdue the Uprising. Now, it does kind of leave my fleet a little... and the planet... a little uh, vulnerable. Given the fact that there's no Admiral there to help, you know, stop any agents. But theoretically, we should only be there long enough just to take over. Oh, look, Admiral Azel is here. He should probably also join our little group. So, Azel, I'll send you over there. Eventually, I'll probably send him to provide defense on a certain planet, but for the time being, we'll send him over there. One of our agents is reporting in. Oh dear. If you hear a little room, it's just the lovely neighbor that always goes by here around 2 in the morning with their loud ass car. Alright, Shinir Ricks has returned. I'm going to be a little dangerous and still send her out on this mission on her own. Actually, one thing, the X-Wing is has an even better detection rating than the Army Regiment, so we'll take out the X-Wing. I think I said Amwat should be another target to receive a whole bunch of defenders. So we'll do three there. Empress will send three. And Forless will send one. Not eleven. One. <laughs> Thanathos. What's he good with? Uh, similarly to a lot of the other admirals that I have. One nice thing about a lot of the Imperial admirals is they do actually have decent combat stats. Not the most perfect, but relatively decent. A manufacturing message has been received. Azel will be on his own separate subdue uprising mission. Actually, you know what? Send Bane with us over there. There is a message from Lord Because another thing that having all these characters together is going to serve. Uh, you can actually have force sensitive or potential Jedi characters found. One of our agents is reporting. Yep, so even though it said even though Vader said, my mission has failed, um, the popular support has been gradually going up. And we just got the little message saying smuggling losses have ended. 
Now, smuggling losses, I think, has to do with, like, raw materials and refined materials. I don't think it affects maintenance. I know uh, blockades affect maintenance. Maintenance is pretty much like your currency. Uh, if maintenance is really low, then you can end up losing ships because of the lack of maintenance. Manufacturing message has been received. Clev here is only good for commanding and for... Well, actually, his main thing is the fact that he can do ship design research. That's what kind of sets him apart from everyone else. Alright, folks. So while we are working to... Subdue this uprising. I will call it here for today. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already... Ooh, what the hell? What the hell is going on here? Hmm, unfortunately I don't have any systems... Or, or any forces around here to check out what's going on over here, but I would really like to know. Um, but yeah, that's gonna be it here for today, folks. So thanks for watching. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. And don't forget to click the little like icon always helps out and don't forget to leave any comments you have about this playthrough i know this is only the start we only had one little fleet battle but there should be a lot more coming with uh rebellion here so thanks for watching and i'll see you all later